Amazing Gospel with Deaconess Victoria is a compilation of edited radio broadcasts Ag Gospel Half Hour with Deaconess Victoria. It is made up of talks comprising of a wide range of topics under the direction of the Holy Spirit, presented from a biblical perspective, in a simple and balanced manner. It is our prayer that you will find encouragement, correction, God's direction and blessing as you listen to these talks over and over again. God bless you, and may heaven at last be the portion of us all. Amen. Greetings in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Gospel Half Hour with Dickiness Victoria. Thank you for joining me. Please let us pray. Our Father and our Most High God, we worship you today. You are all that we have. You are our Savior, our Redeemer, our Maker, our Sustainer, the Author and the Finisher of our faith. You are God who will never leave us nor forsake us. You are all things to all men in all circumstances when we look up to you in faith. Almighty God, you are the one who can change destinies for the better. When sin and Satan have destroyed our destinies and our life pattern, you are God who can restore us onto the path of righteousness, holiness, purity, joy, peace, and love. And you are God Almighty who can ultimately usher us into the kingdom of heaven. It is my prayer, it is our prayer that we shall all see your face someday in Jesus' name and be glad. Almighty God, whilst we remain here on earth, please help us to live for you. Grant us victory in every situation of life. Bless us in our families, in our finances, in the work of our hands. Bless us spiritually, mentally, socially. Bless us health-wise. Bless us, O oh God, in our relationships. Thank you for hearing our prayers, dear God, for we ask in faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. By the grace of God, today we'll be talking about overcoming financial difficulties, and this is part two. We said last week that it is the will of God that we should prosper. God has provided enough supplies on earth to meet the need of every human being and with extra left over. It is only sin, it is wickedness, it is the breaking of the laws of God that causes famines, causes lack, causes insufficiency in the lives of men and in nations. It is the will of God that we should not only be blessed but be a blessing. And when there is insufficiency, when there is lack, when there is famine, when we come to God in repentance, he is able to break the yoke, he is able to break that limitation and grant healing and restoration to our lives and to our land. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, My God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But before that scripture, notice that the people gave, they gave, they gave. In other words, because they sowed seed, God had something to work with and he was able to supply all their needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You see, there is a law of sowing and reaping which is universal. When you give, you receive. When you sow seed in the ground, you reap much more. In like manner, when you give, you get much more. It is a spiritual law. Psalm 145 verse 16 says, God opens his hands and satisfies the desires of every living thing. God is able to meet the needs of beasts of the field, of the birds of the air. And if he can meet their needs and feed them, how much more human beings you and I? And so let us not give up. Let us not be discouraged. Because God is able to change the story of every man from financial lack and insufficiency to prosperity. Praise the Lord. Let us look at a biblical example of someone whose story was changed, whose destiny was changed. And that person is Jabez. In First Chronicles chapter 4, only two verses talk about him. Verses 9 and 10. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand 
would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Praise the Lord. Simple, straightforward. Jabez was a baby boy born in difficult circumstances. And just like we do today, we name a child based on the circumstances of his birth or her birth or based on what we would desire for that child. His mother named him Jabez, meaning sorrowful, born in sorrow, born in pain. You see, in the Bible, names are very, very important. For example, when God was going to change the destiny of Abraham, remember he had no children on time. God changed his name from Abram, meaning exalted father, to Abraham, meaning father of many nations. And that was how his life and destiny turned out to be. The name of an individual is a confession over his or her life every time he is called. So each time Jabez was called Jabez, he was being called Sorrow, Sorrow, come here. Sorrow, go and get me that plate. Sorrow, come and eat your food. Each time he was called Jabez, his destiny was being reinforced in the direction of the name by which he was called. So calling an individual sorrow every time will enforce sorrow in his life. But at a point, Jabez got tired of sorrow. And he sought the face of God for a change in his story, in his destiny for the better. Jabez's simple prayer was powerful because he prayed with faith in God. He believed that God was able to change the direction of his life. In addition, he was a man who had the fear of God and lived a good life that honored God and served men because the Bible said he was more honorable than his brethren. And so in the case of Jabez, yes, the Bible did not tell us that his name was changed, but the point is that God changed his future. God changed his legacy. For Jabez had prayed, please don't let my label be my legacy. Don't let sorrow be my legacy. And God answered his prayers. Therefore, even today, if finances are a challenge in our lives, we can call upon the God of heaven and earth to change our situation, to change our story to bless us indeed and grant us sufficiency and indeed more than enough. And it goes beyond money, goes beyond finances. Whatever is lacking in our lives, we can seek the face of God, waiting upon him in prayer and fasting to change our story and God will do so. Because he said, ask and you shall receive in Matthew 7 verse 7. Seek and you shall find knock and the door will be opened unto you. Praise God. We said last week that in overcoming financial challenges, our mindset is important in all that we do. We should guard our hearts with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23 We said as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so do not believe that you are poor. Do not believe that you will continue in chronic insufficiency of funds. Do not be intimidated by poverty to a point where you cannot see yourself rising above poverty, lack, insufficiency, and financial depression. We also said that we should keep our mindset focused on the word of God and not allow depression and unhappiness to suppress our hearts and minds. Remember Isaiah 12, 3 says that with joy, you shall draw waters from the wells of salvation. If you want anything from God, you must not allow yourself be in depression for it is with joy that we receive from God. That is a spiritual principle we should not forget. And so we said, have the mindset of a giver and not a beggar. Have the mindset of one who distributes blessings and finances and not the mindset of a hoarder because you are afraid that the money will finish or be insufficient for you. Praise God. We also said, don't talk lack. When you have the right mindset, you will not talk lack. 
Do not say, I don't have, I don't have enough, I'm a poor person. Do not sigh in discouragement, but always speak prosperity, speak more than enough. Trust God to direct your steps to provision or to direct provision to you. We also said that sometimes lack and poverty, especially when chronic, could be as a result of demonic manipulation, but that this can be broken through seeking the face of God, just like we saw Jabez do, or through prayers and declarations by an anointed vessel of God. And then we also said we should learn to live within our means, because sometimes we do not have enough because of a lifestyle of wastefulness. Praise the Lord. And so today, let us continue by saying that in overcoming financial insufficiency, in whatever business we do, we should ensure that we offer quality service to our customers. Quality service will encourage patronage and with that, steady financial supplies. Colossians 3 verse 23 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Whatever you do, do it as an offering unto God, as a service unto God and not to man. Because God is going to reward us for everything that we do. And if we know that God will reward us for what we do, then we will do it well so that we will receive reward from him. If we know that what we do is unto God, then we will do it well because we want to give God the glory in all things. Titus 2 verse 7 says, In all things we should show ourselves to be a pattern of good works. Show yourself a pattern of good works. Glorify God by being excellent in all that you do. We see that Daniel was a man of excellence. In Daniel 6 verse 3, the Bible says, Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. He was a prayerful man. Daniel was a God-fearing man who served under five kings. Because of the excellence of Daniel, in the way he conducted himself and his work, he served under five kings. In fact, at a point, the king, King Darius, appointed 120 satraps. These were rulers over provinces and with three administrators over them, of which Daniel was one of them. We read that story in Daniel 6. And Daniel excelled above all of the other administrators to the point where his colleagues were jealous of him and you know the story they planned to have him eliminated through the lion's den jealousy is witchcraft but at the end of the day god delivered him because he was found to be guiltless before god praise the lord righteousness will deliver you even if it looks like you are getting into trouble or things are slow but at the end of the day Righteousness will bring you prosperity. Righteousness will bring you peace. Righteousness will bring you favor. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. And so in your work, offer quality because quality will attract men to your business. Poor quality service could lead to low patronage and low income. If you are a tailor, for instance, make an effort to sew people's clothes very well. Be a provider of excellence. Don't fix a zip in the middle of a blouse and then one end of the fabric at the neck is higher than the other. Once a tailor sewed a brown blouse for me and used black thread to hem it. I made him take it out. Don't hem a dress and the line is not straight. If you are a tailor and you make a mistake with your client's clothes, the honorable thing to do is to offer to replace the fabric. Or you are a painter and you allow paint to drip onto the tile skirting at the bottom of the wall. Or you paint a ceiling white and the wall is blue, but you allow the paint from the ceiling to drip onto the wall. And then you make such a mess on the floor. You don't even make an effort to put a covering on the floor in order to protect the tiles on the floor from the paint that falls from the walls. This should not be push for quality, push for excellence, so that people can always recommend you 
and finances will not be a challenge. In like manner, do not allow your business premises to be dirty, whether inside or outside. If you are in a plaza, make an effort to clean the staircase leading up to your office. Don't say it's for everyone and it's for nobody. Let the front of your office be clean. If need be, clean up your corridor even if your neighbors don't care. Be a person of excellence. Let your environment be clean, especially if you're a food seller. Put mosquito nets on your windows to keep out flies and rodents. And by all means, fumigate the place regularly. There have been instances where flies have been found inside meat pie or cockroaches inside rice bought from food outlets. And in addition, be honest, be sincere. People will patronize you if they know you are honest and sincere. Are you a mechanic, for instance? Be honest, be sincere. And when you are making a lot of money, always remember to save for the rainy day. Avoid waste. Remember when Jesus Christ fed the multitude, the 5,000 men besides children and uh, women. After the people had eaten, he asked his disciples to gather the leftovers. There was no waste. God abhors wastefulness. Praise God. Also, as a business person, be friendly and respectful with your clients. People will always want to go where they are celebrated. There's hardly any business that you do that you do not require people. Are you a tailor, a mechanic, a restauranter, a grocery store owner, shopkeeper, selling spare parts, clothes, shoes, whatever it is? You need people. And so be warm and accommodating with your clients and teach your shopkeepers to be respectful towards your clients and to be patient with them, even with those who are difficult. Let us offer excellent services to our customers. It will enhance our finances and deliver us from financial insufficiency. Praise God. Another thing to note in overcoming financial insufficiency is to avoid borrowing. Borrowing is against the word of God. If you are a child of God, it is not scriptural to borrow money. Proverbs 22 verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. The Bible says we shall lend to nations, we shall not borrow. It is disobedience to the word of God to borrow. Borrowing makes you a slave to the lender. There are times that financial institutions may approach you wanting to give you a facility. And they are usually warm and inviting at the beginning. Or maybe you approach them yourself. But if you make the mistake of taking that facility, they will not tell you that there are hidden costs. And so you may apply for a loan of 1 million naira. But by the time you get the money, it may be about 750,000 naira. Because then they will tell you there's this surcharge and there's that surcharge and there's another surcharge. And of course, the interest is compound. And there have been people who have been wrecked by borrowing money from financial institutions. Nations have been rendered impoverished by borrowing money from financial bodies because you keep servicing these loans. I remember one time someone I know became frustrated with servicing his loan from a financial institution, did all he could, sold off some of his shares just to be able to pay off. The shocking thing was that the bank was unhappy that he came to pay off the loan. Praise God. Sometimes they have interests in your collateral. So organize yourself to live without borrowing or begging as a lifestyle. It puts you in a position of vulnerability where people will talk to you with disrespect. It strips you of self-dignity. Remember the sparrow. The Bible says that God feeds them. Trust God to provide for you. Sometimes what you need to start a business is in your hands already. A brother of mine who needed money to do a business about 25 years ago decided to sell his new car instead of going to the bank. It was a difficult decision, but he did it. And thank God his wife did not oppose the decision. His wife did not push him to go and borrow money from a financial institution because of the glamour of riding in a brand new car. Conversely, avoid lending money you cannot afford to lose. If someone asks you for some money, say 500,000 naira, if you cannot afford to lose it, then maybe you should give the person, say 40,000 naira. 
and say, just take this for your business and may God supply the rest. Because there is a possibility that the individual might not return the money and you don't want to be in strife with your friends or family over money. And never look to man as your provider. God is your source. And he may choose anyone or a job as a resource to meet your needs. We should therefore never look to man as our source. It is ungodly to do so. Woe to him that puts his trust in man, says the Lord God. When you do that, you elevate man to a place that should be occupied by God alone. God is our creator. He is our provider. He is our daddy. The Bible says he is Abba, Father. Abba means provider, source. He is our loving Father. We dishonor God when we look to man instead of to God. Praise God. Again, in overcoming financial insufficiency, we should walk in wisdom. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye. To avoid business failure, remember that any business you cannot control or you do not know the source or the mode of operation should be avoided. Please learn to pray and be led by the Spirit of God before you invest your money in a business, especially large amounts of money. A business that you do not know where their headquarters is, or maybe is in some far-off foreign country where you cannot access, avoid it. Some multi-level businesses should be avoided. Any business you cannot control or you cannot determine its outcome should be avoided. Businesses where they say, bring one person and we will give you so-so amount. Bring two people, you get a bigger commission. Bring three people, you get that. You really do not know what they do. We have seen so many like that who ultimately have collapsed and disappeared with people's monies. If it is too good to be true, then it is probably not true. Many will say bring 200,000 and within six months you get 400,000. Many of us get messages like that on social media or calls like that. Avoid businesses like that. Or someone may say bring 700,000 and I will get you a visa to travel out. If you can raise 700,000, then why can't you just use it to start your own business? Read yourself of the mindset that you can only make it abroad. It's not easy in many of those countries as well. There's recession everywhere. And it's easier to stay at home where you can get someone to help you, at least give you lunch. Unlike a stranger in a foreign land where no one will look at you. God says he will instruct you in the way you should go. Why not ask him which way you should go? And by all means, avoid those people who promise to take you to Europe through the Sahara Desert. So many have died as a consequence. Some have been stranded in foreign nations along the way, working in slave-like conditions. Do not go abroad simply because your friends are going abroad. And if you must go, please ensure you have prayed and are led by the Spirit of God to go. And go with your papers complete. Praise God. And again, let me say, in overcoming financial difficulties, have a mindset to serve God and to serve man. Seek God. Seek God with all your heart. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Not money first. Are you jobless? For now, keep yourself busy serving God. Several years ago, I heard the story of a young man who had been unable to get a job for quite a while after graduating. He had prayed for a job and just trusted God for one. One day, he had an impression in his heart to go and clear out the garbage dump on one of the street corners in his city. And as he was doing it, someone passed by and it was the governor of his state. The man was concerned that only one worker was working on site and there was no vehicle, official vehicle of the environmental board around. And so he stopped, interrogated the young man and discovered that he was just a graduate who was clearing the garbage dump as a social service. The governor was so impressed that he gave him his complimentary card and instructed him to see him in his office the following Monday. And long story made short, that was the end of his unemployment. You see, God knows which fish has the gold coin in its mouth. 
Just pray and trust him to direct your steps aright. Even in the place of service in church or unto man, God will open doors unto you. Interestingly, someone once told me about a certain brother in his church who each time he was broke would go out and evangelize. And for that brother, even though the reason might be argued to be wrong, but each time he did it, he said money would always come to him because in the place of service is provision. Proverbs 10 verse 4 says, Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Avoid laziness. Proverbs 12 11 says, Those who walk their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. Proverbs 12 24 says, Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. There is a time for everything. As a young person, work hard, invest well, and build wealth over time. Do not be in a hurry to get rich quickly. You are likely to do wickedly that way. Do not envy those who are much older than you and have made it in life. You cannot get to where they are overnight. Don't blow all you earn on wild goose adventures only to start all over again. Be moderate and live within your means. And lastly, give. Be a giver. It sounds strange, doesn't it? Because giving is supposed to deplete your resources. The world tells us that giving will reduce what you have. But it is a godly principle that when we give, we receive. Because giving operates under the law of sowing and reaping. A farmer, for instance, may sow two grains of corn and reap an average of 600 grains in return. Luke 6.38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. In Genesis 26, we see where Isaac prospered because he trusted in God and not in himself or in the elements by sowing in a time of famine and yet he reaped a hundredfold. When you sow trusting God, God will ensure that you reap a reward. So when you pay your tithe and when you give on top of that, doing it in trust, doing it in good ground, God will ensure that you will be blessed as a result. And who do we give to? We give to our parents. We give to family. We give to those in need, even if they are not related to us. We give to kingdom enlargement, needs of the church. We give to pastors, to ministers of the gospel, to those who minister to our spiritual needs. We are to minister to their carnal needs. The prayers of all these people will bless you. And the more you give, the more you receive. Praise the Lord. I remember years ago when I gave a pledge at a full gospel businessmen's fellowship international meeting. And it was through that seed that God blessed me with a car. And so when you give, give with a cheerful heart. Do not give out of compulsion. Remember that the opportunity to give is the opportunity to be blessed. Praise the Lord. And when you tithe or you give, you are giving to God. You are not giving to man. And it is God who will ensure that you receive your reward. Praise God. Thank you for listening. God bless you richly. The best kind of wealth is spiritual. That which ends in heaven. Which no power of the enemy can destroy. To be a partaker of it, you must give your life to Jesus Christ. Repenting of sin and trusting him to cleanse you from all sin by his blood. And so let us pray together saying, Almighty God. I realize I have sinned against you. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Make me a child of God. From today, I will live to please and honor you. I will not go back to sin. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I encourage you to read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Join a godly Bible-believing church. Get a Christian devotional booklet like our daily bread, our daily guide, our daily manner for your daily quiet time with God. And ensure you take time to fast and pray every week, seeking the face of God. God bless you richly. Amen. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email us at deaconessvictoria at gmail.com. And you may also wish to tune to YouTube to listen to more messages. And the address is Gospel Half Hour with Dickiness Victoria Timothy. 
I pray for you that you will surmount all financial challenges. You will never beg to eat in life as you obey the principles of sowing and reaping. In Jesus' name, Amen.